Well, I, I broke up my girl. Oh, my girlfriend kicked me out at one o'clock this morning. Right. And um, so I strolled back into the park at three o'clock yeah. and set up camp. Uh, lived here for about ten months. Gave it about two months gap. Um, it's always been a pretty homely place. Yeah. We've always had. There's always been a large number of bodies on this side of the park. Yeah. At the moment, it's a bit quiet. But, um, living bodies, yeah. Living bodies, that is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so you got to know a few people here. Yeah, I know. I know a few. Yeah, I've got to know the, the community pretty well. Yeah. Is it like your second home? Yes or no? Yeah. I've just I've just recently come back from a, embarked on a tour to uh, Melbourne. Okay. And um, I actually think Melbourne's more of a home than Sydney yeah. somehow. Now you said before community. What did you mean? Um, the amount of people that that are here and you make you make friends and 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 some you know some have your back and some don't. Yeah. You, you always got you've always got a bad apple in, in the middle of the bunch. Always yeah. doesn't yeah. matter where you go. Yeah, of course. But um. You just learn to deal with it, I suppose. So, how do you get by, like, just for your daily needs? Well, I get paid Centrelink, uh, two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hear that? And um, it's not much. Yeah. Doesn't and that's get... a week or a fortnight? No, weekly. Okay. Luckily. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that gets me by. Mm-hmm. Probably made it a bit easier because I was living at my girlfriend's house and um, yeah, but had two incomes. So. Yeah. 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 Three and a half years ago, I was married with um, with um, seven children. Well, they went on mine, only two on mine. Yeah. And um, so I broke up with my wife, and um, so separated. I was living in in a in a van that I had in the back of, back of the house, and you know, dug my heels in. Anyway, had to go. So ended up living in a few other people's houses before I come on the streets. And um, one day I went to work over at uh, Renwick, and um, that afternoon I came to the food van near the cathedral mm-hmm. um, and had ate food and had fellowship with the, the people there. Yeah. And um, someone, one of the people, led me back to the park, and this is where it all kicked off. Mm-hmm. That my journey here on the streets was was God's purpose. Well, a, you know, I think I was sent out here by by God. Um, my journey, my two and a half year journey out here on the streets, has been quite content and quite pain free and threat free than than a lot of other people's. A lot of people come out here on the streets, and and it's it's a hard it's a hard life. But you know, it's never been that way. You you were saying that. You met plenty of people who have had it much harder than you. Oh yes, I, you know, I came from a good family and a good background. With yes. um, shh. Yeah, they come back, they come back. All right, all right. Funny, huh? Yeah, <laughs> funny, ha ha. Take care, eh? See ya. Um, so you're saying about um, some people have done it much harder than you? Oh yeah, I came from a, um, I came from a good house, good parents, loving family. And uh, the stories you hear out here on the streets of you know people being beaten and and um, parents just treat them like garbage. It's yeah. just not fair. Yeah. So, what gives you hope? Uh, what gives me hope? Well, unfortunately, most of my life is God's been with me most of my, most of my life. Um, I tried to commit suicide about three and a half, four years ago and um, and I know from, from that experience that, um, that the only reason I'm here now is because cause God saved me and um, what gives me hope is because one day I'm going to get out of this park and I'm going to have a, a decent, li- well, a better life than what I have now. I mean, this is to exist in amongst a community of people is not, is not so hard. But to exist outside of this community, with the rest, with the rest of Australia, is the hard part. How old are you now? Uh, Forty. Okay. Um, do you have contact with your family? Uh, yeah, I have only just recently. I've got one relative, which is my sister, yeah. still alive. Um, 
and I've only just started getting back in contact with her. I, I sort of sort of fell away there for for maybe two years, but um, it's slowly starting to pick up the pieces. Mm-hmm. And fortunate for me is that I own a house in the suburbs. I mean, sorry, but just because I own a house doesn't mean that I can't be like everyone else here. Yeah. Um, so, and that was a, where the breakdown was between me and my sister was that she's lived in in my in our house for like four years when it was supposed to be sold years ago yep. so hopefully in a couple of months it'll be sold yep. and then I want to buy um, a Jim's Moe franchise right. yeah, and move yeah, on Pearls of wisdom buddy, pearls of wisdom you got a lot of um, great things to share um, if you had a chance to chat to a few young folks who were at the crossroads you know and their life was just starting to slip and they were they were thinking of heading down the wrong path and thinking that, you know, it's all glory and, you know, everything will be fine and they'll just bounce back every time, not knowing what's around the corner, you know what I mean? Yeah. What sort of advice would you give to someone in that situation? Um, just watch your back. Just just look after yourself and be careful. It, it, it can be a dangerous place out here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it depends on who you are and and what you have around you, yeah. personally. Yeah. Fair enough. Good stuff. It's great chatting to you. All right. Thanks very much. Good on you. God bless you. Privilege to catch up. Thank you. Take care, mate.